get ready for this upcoming week with you here. And not just you, but everyone at home too. I can't wait forward for the week. Yeah, it's going to be amazing. Welcome everyone to Flame Fatals 2022. Flame Fatals is our August week-long all-women charity speedrunning event presented by the Frame Fatals community. Mm -hmm. My name is Frozen Flygon, the Frame Fatals event lead, and I'm overjoyed to be here with Kung Fu Fruit Cup to talk about some of the incredible games we have this event. Yes, awesome. Hello, I am Fu, and I'm so happy to be chatting with Court again about the games. Indeed. Uh, also, we are benefiting Malala Fund. Once again, Malala Fund is an international organization, nonprofit that is um, advocating for girls' education. So Malala Fund is working for a world where every girl can learn and lead. And since this is uh, our fifth event with them, over the five events, we have been raising over $395,000. Wow. It's been amazing. Such an honor. So I can't wait to, you know, donate more for them and raise money for them um, and uh, talk about some of the games coming up. So can you think of anything that you'd want to start us off with? Yeah. So since we're all so cozy right now, I think let's start off with the opener of the marathon, which is a calm indie game called Unpacking. Mm -hmm. QDRSR is going to be running this. And the story of the game is just told entirely by unpacking boxes of the protagonist's life. It's really beautiful. But the speed run is incredibly precise. Unpacking everything, putting it in the right spots. <laughs> it, it's going to be incredible. Rue's going to unpack this run in just under an hour. Wow, that's amazing. I could use that kind of help in my place. Oh I my just gosh. Moved. That would be great if you don't mind. No, okay. <laughs> but when you do unpack at home, it feels so good. Like getting your home unpacked. You can like start a garden. Maybe you have some fields. You could like... Okay, that's really Stardew Valley. But you know what? Stardew Valley happens to be the run that comes after unpacking. And we're going to get to see Blackheart Wings show us a craft room run. So craft rooms run is when you repair the first room of the community center. Cool. And since this is a seated run, you're going to have a lot of predetermined items in like set locations. So it's going to make routing a lot easier and a lot faster, which is great. Plus, right after that is our first incentive, Ooh. which is the Valiant Sons Stardew Valley uh, category show extension showcase category extension showcase it's going to be awesome because you're going to get to see more things all throughout the game plus memes oh we always need more memes <laughs> yes we do so both the crafts room run and the meme showcase are going to be incredible we have so many passionate stardew valley speedrunners in the frame fatals discord so i know there's going to be a ton of love for those runs agreed so love stardew love unpacking it's making me so comfy i'm ready oh. it's going to be good did you did you hear something? Um, maybe. I, actually, I think there's something out there. Oh, it's a, oh my! Is this a pumpkin? What? What's it doing here? Oh, there oh. you are. Hi. Just looked away for a second, and she disappeared. Ghost types, am I right? Well, <laughs> Corbin, now that you've found your pumpkin boob, you want to tell us a little bit about the Pokemon runs we have coming up in the event? I'd love to. Opening up Friday, we have Pokemon Legends Arceus Beat Cleaver by Kagi and Nikki. It's a quick bite of the full any percent run that finishes after the first Frenzy Lord fight. Just long enough to show off all the new mechanics in Pokemon Legends Arceus. If you're curious about what a run might look like for a game that's so such a big departure from the standard Pokemon formula, definitely check that out. Yes, I loved playing Arceus casually. It was an awesome game. Um, and it's making its debut at GDQ, which That's is correct. even better. Yes. Uh, now with Pokemon, there's actually another Pokemon run that you're involved in as well, right? That's also correct. <laughs> Kicking off the last day of the marathon next Saturday is Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire, a race between Sanjan and myself. Uh, despite fighting different villain teams, entirely different Pokemon the back half of the game, they're shockingly similar in length. Hmm. Every time I've done a race of it, it's been super close. Uh, Sanjay and I actually raced this a couple months ago for the Pokemon Speedrunning Diversity Marathon. So this is a lo really a long-awaited rematch of that. Wow. And as a bonus, you can see <gasps> oh! two mudkips. Oh my gosh, they're so cute. I love them. <laughs> Which, now that I think about it, I should probably go practice. Oh, right. Good luck with that. Thanks, May. <laughs> okay, I'm not going to lie. I was a little scared. I, I was. By the pumpkin. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but you know, there's like actually a huge difference between being scared by things and watching scary speedruns. You know? Yes, absolutely. That is a great point because we have a horror game speedrunning block during this marathon. Ooh, yes. It so starts good. Monday night at 8.30 with Shivers by Katie Moon. So Shivers is a really unique point-and-click adventure game that has a non-linear story. So Ooh. every single time she completes it, it's kind of on-the-fly routing to evade the supernatural. Wow. It's going to be really exciting. And 
I think there's some other games involving ghosts that we've got. Uh, yes, like Ghostbusters. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm so excited <laughs> for that run. It's going to be great. Um, So we're going to have Wolf Shadow take us through a very silly eight minutes. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I know. But it'll help us, you know, not be too scared during the Scary Games Black. And you know, I ain't afraid of no ghosts. <laughs> okay, like Ghostbusters. Okay. <laughs> anyway, yeah, no, I'm totally afraid of ghosts. Um, especially in Phasmophobia. You know, and that happens to be the bonus game at the end of that block. Oh my gosh, that's incredible. Yes, I have to wish good luck to Nicole Goodnight and Bath and Jan who are tackling an any percent nightmare mode, mm. which sounds like a nightmare because you have to be stuck in six different houses trying to determine different ghosts that are out to get you. So... As scary as that's going to be, I definitely don't want to miss watching it. And donating for it, got to get that bonus game in and all the other incentives. Yeah, exactly. You can keep up with the progress of how we're doing on all of our bonus games, incentives, the schedule by going to gamesdonequick.com. That's also where you're going to go to check out some awesome prizes we have, which don't worry, we're going to get to that in a bit. We're going to get to that in a bit. Ooh, <laughs> but uh, I also maybe be a bit nervous about ghosts and scary games, but I'm confident we can unlock the phasmophobia, right? Yes, absolutely. You know, with phasma, like... Do you ever do you ever die in Phasmo and you just feel like you're like stuck in purgatory or it's like it's like the underworld almost or like it's kind of oh the underworld you're like reading my mind Am I was I? just thinking about the Hades run that we have Hades I, right uh, I first of all I love that game we've mm -hmm. seen it before at Frame Fatal's marathons but never like this because Arcalina and Trash Lapras are doing a two players one controller <gasps> three weapons run of Hades. Yes. Yeah, they are so talented that their co-op PB of this is 14th on the normal leaderboard. Wow. How incredible. So that just shows how talented they are both individually and together. Yes, absolutely. Two-player, one-controller runs are some of my absolute favorites at GDQ marathons, just in general. They're so much fun and they're usually so goofy. Um, And later that day, another one I'm really excited about is the last Guardian Any% percent race. It's going to be super fun. We are going to uh, see another lovely Team Eco game being featured here. And that is going to have Sable, Dragon, Rook, and Usurpering. And um, we're going to get to see their abilities to manage Trico, which is the large, like, cat, dog, bird, furry, flying friend that you have to manage. <laughs> awesome. Um, to help them race through all the various puzzles throughout the game. And since there's no major sequence breaks in this, it's mostly going to focus around AI manipulation, a lot of RNG, and, uh, and some precise movement to see who can, like, race to the finish first. That's awesome. And that's not the only race that we're going to see. Right, yeah. We have some other, like, runners racing each other. The... No, 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 no. Foo. No. There's an entire block of racing games. Oh, racing games! Yes! <gasps> yes! There's a there's a Disney racing oh, game. Okay, yep, yeah, there is. I'm 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 just going to let you take that one. We don't need to have another squabble about Disney games this pre-show, so go, go right ahead. <laughs> okay, don't mind if I do. So, all right, here we go. <clears throat> Scene opens on a beautiful N64 track. We, like, pan up to Mickey and friends, each in their own individual vehicle, ready to go on the fresh asphalt. The sun's shining down. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh -uh. Okay. Anyway, I'm being a little dramatic, but I'm really excited for these Mickey's Speedway USA All Professional Cups run by Garby the Glitcheress. It's going to be awesome. That's going to be a Wednesday evening to open up that racing block. Mm -hmm. It's going to have all the Disney characters, super charming music, and more. And then right after is the Hello Kitty and Sanrio oh. Friends Racing by Air Angel, which is going to be great. I never thought... Racing games could be so adorable. Those are going to be so cute. And then to close out the racing block, we've got a back-to-back -back Mario Kart 8 Deluxe runs by Amber. Nice. Awesome. Yeah, those are going to be absolutely amazing. The first one is a bonus tracks, 200cc no items, featuring some of the tracks we know and love, like Yoshi's Circuit and my family's favorite, Baby Park. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and... If we don't need to unlock the bonus run afterwards, Amber's going to do a run of Waves 1 and 2 of the new DLC. Brand wow. new tracks. Ooh, new stuff. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm so excited to see how far the DLC speedruns have come in such a short time by one of the best runners in this scene. Yes, absolutely. That's going to be really hype. It's got wonderful music. And uh, speaking of wonderful music, we have an awesome little Rhythm Games block yes. happening on Friday. Please, if you've never heard of Noise Starlight, can't even describe it. You, you just have to see it. We were watching it. Oh. It's incredible. You, you just have to see it. You, Please. You've got to watch out for that. Yes. And you got to watch out for all the amazing prizes we oh, have. Prizes. Yes. Yeah, I know you were waiting for that. <laughs> <laughs> so you can see all the prizes that we have every single day. They're going to be different every day that you donate. So you got to be sure to go to gamesdonequick.com. Check out all the wonderful prizes that 
amazing people have donated their time and talent for mm-hmm. this event. And if you get $150 donated throughout the entire marathon, you'll be entered to win our grand prize. <gasps> Ooh, what's the grand prize? So, part one of the grand prize. Oh, okay. Part one, there's more than one part. We have an OLED <gasps> Nintendo Switch. Ooh, oh my god! I absolutely love my Nintendo Switch. And the OLED model is perfect for laying in bed, being comfy, playing by the campfire. I, and I absolutely love the color palette. Of this absolutely. One. Yes, the white is just so clean and pretty. Oh, it looks so good. Yeah. And, you know, if you like mobile gaming, but you also like console gaming, we have a PS5 available. Wait, a PS5? Yes. That's the well. second part is our grand prize. So that's a, that's a huge grand prize. Yes. That's amazing. So that's cumulative. So you can donate for different prizes every day, but then mm-hmm. also. Donate for the grand prize. $150. Yes. <gasps> That's so good. God, it's so exciting. There's it's so, so many hype. awesome I prizes. Just, hey, hey everybody. It sounds real hype in here. What's Hi. up? Look, we're just, we're just talking about the prizes and they're going to be so cool and I'm so excited. I love prizes so much. It's like you got to, okay, you okay. have to like donate for everything. Okay, cool. Here, have some tea. Oh my gosh, good. Tea. You're so welcome, you. Foo. Oh, okay, Um. let me. Okay, oh, hold on a sec, hold on a sec. I need to get those crumbs. We're going to need those for our RPG block that's coming up. Oh. Uh, yeah. Basari, she's going to need them for her mother, Earthbound Beginnings Run, where she is going to use bread and chill in order to warp to the end of the game while still at level two. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's impressive. Though, that reminds me, uh, do we have any duct tape? First breadcrumbs, now duct tape? Um, I, I have some here. What do we uh, need it for? Perfect, perfect. Well, it? Leggy Starscream is going to need this in order to duct tape all sorts of weapons onto her robot pals in her Final Fantasy Legend 2 run, where we are going to be taking our friends and defeating the Talls. I mean, the gods. <laughs> Though, speaking of Talls, we also are going to have Aeon Frodo is going to be guiding Riku through Castle Oblivion in the original Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories. Kingdom Hearts! Yeah, it's going to be great. We have to get Riku that new coat and we're going to use <laughs> darkness and cards to defeat Organization 13 to do it. Awesome. But proving that RPG speedruns don't have to be super long, we're going to be finishing up the block with Lumi running Divinity Original Sin 2 in hopefully under 30 minutes, wow. which is wow. just great because I'm starting to get sleepy. Well, we've got the whole marathon about to happen. Well, I guess I'm just going to have to speed run that now. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> all right. See you later, Natara. Thanks for the breakdown of all amazing RPG runs we've got. I, I know those are going to be really interesting. Um, Phil, what you, what you got over there? Oh, sorry. I I just... I, this is weird. I found... Uh, looks like not one, but two Zelda Ocarina of Time runs. Oh, my gosh. That's incredible. <laughs> So, what makes those two runs different? Well, it looks like we have here a 100% no SRM run, as well as a five Dungeon Sanity co-op randomizer. Mm. Oh my goodness. Okay, here we go. So, we have Claire D first of all, taking us through this 100% no stale reference manipulation run. That's the no SRM part. I know it's a lot. Don't worry. You'll get to know it better. <laughs> uh, make sure you don't miss it. Um, so this is going to be some wild movement to collect every inventory item in the game using some really unconventional um, like tricks and movement and things like that. Cool. So the other half that we're going to get to see is that five Dungeon Sanity co-op mm. randomizer. This is between Fant and Nuclear. Nuclear. So they're working together to get five di- different dungeon rewards as they work their way toward Ganon. And the beauty of it is that they're working simultaneously as they split up to do different checks around the game uh, to cover more of the game for oh, us cool. to see and in less time. That's awesome. It's That's be really great. interesting. Yes, more Zelda for everybody. I oh, love Zelda. Yeah, I, I love those runs too. I think it's going to be so cool to see all of the vanilla game and then just have it so mixed up in the yes. randomizer. I, I yeah. can't wait for that. And, okay, everyone, listen up. You just need to watch all of Saturday. <laughs> okay. All of it. Because the finale day is so Hype. Okay. The run. I'm gonna give you the rundown. Okay. Of the games that we've got. All right. So, Pokemon, Kirby, Celeste, Kaizo Mario, Bayonetta two, Titanfall two, and a Super Mario Shuffler by Skybills to close Ooh. out Flame Fatals. That is amazing. Okay. Cool. There's so oh. much to watch. This is gonna be incredible. Now, I wish we could talk about more of these, but unfortunately, we are out of time because we need to get going with this marathon. So for now, we are going to head on over to speak with um, the Malala Fund CEO once again. It'll be super fun. So I'm going to go have a chat with Suzanne Ehlers. 
fantastic and enjoy the week, everyone. Hello, Hello everyone. everyone. Yes, 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 Tell 2022. As you may see, we are having just a little technical blip in the meantime, but I hope that you are all super cozy with either your hot drink or cold drink of choice. So in the meantime, while we wait, wait to resolve a couple things, we are just going to read through a few of your incredible donations that have already come through. We can see there is a lot of hype for the event already. So let's get into it. First off, we have $1,000 from TMS LFT, who says, Flame Fatales is here already? Awesome. Let's get this show started. Good luck to all the runners and comfy vibes to the cute chat. We also have $50 from Sarah of Mars, who says, Pumpkaboo! So much love for Pumpkaboo this morning. We love to see it. Slash afternoon, slash evening, slash happy time zone, everybody. We have $25 from MX June Reese, who says, Hive! Also, in the meantime, just while we're waiting, if you have not seen the incentives that we have coming up, Make sure that when you are sending in your donations, you are selecting your incentive of choice. For example, right now, our first incentive that we are working towards is the Stardew Valley bonus run meme category extension showcase. If you love Stardew Valley and if you love memes, then you definitely want to be supporting this incentive. 
So as of right now, we have, and it just jumped, $1,880 out of $3,000 to unlock this incentive. So this incentive will be coming after the first Stardew Valley run. So we want to make sure that by the end of that first Stardew Valley run, we have hit that incentive. So let's see those donations come in, folks. We are raising money for Malala Fund and we're having a great time while we're at it. All right, everyone, now is time for our live interview. I'm going to send you over there and we'll see you right after this. Enjoy. All righty, we are back. Hello. Yes, Kung Fu Freak up here. I promise I didn't do anything too wild. I tried my best. <laughs> my powers are too strong sometimes. Okay. Hello, everyone. I am joined by Suzanne Ehlers, the CEO with Malala Fund. Hello, Suzanne. How's it going? That's great. It's great. It's so good to be back with you. I know exactly. I've spoken with Suzanne before, but in case those of you are watching for the very first time, Suzanne, I'd love to hear a little bit about uh, your time as CEO with Malala Fund. Give us a taste of what Malala Fund is and, uh, and your role. Yeah. So Malala Fund's a, a global nonprofit organization. We're founded in 2013, so almost 10 years old, still in our wow. kind of early adolescence. Um, founded by Nobel laureate Malala Yousafzai and her father Ziadine, um, focused on girls' education, trying to get girls in school, safe, free, quality education, all the stuff that too many of us take for granted and is just not a reality for a lot of girls around the world. I started as CEO about two and a half years ago. We've talked almost four times, I think. I know. So, <laughs> This is awesome. So about two and a half years in the CEO role, and I just sort of help make sure that all the global work um, gets the lift and visibility it deserves. So then what, what has it been like for you as CEO over these past two and a half years? Because I know that we've spoken multiple times, but just how, how has that kind of like been for you overall? Just maybe the feeling or the experience in general? Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll be honest, it's not been an easy stretch of time. You know, I you're sort of working at home, the world is starting to reopen, we haven't traveled that much, we're sort of worried, of course, always about the public health and safety of our, of our staff and our colleagues and our partners. I think things are finally starting to shift and it's starting to feel more like sort of just a normal organization and normal workday. I mean, the good news in all of it is that Malala Fun team across the globe is incredible. Um, and the girls we work with and the partners we work with, everybody saw that kind of more than ever education had to be at the center people were out of school they were learning via radio they were trying to figure out zoom classrooms i even if you had education all of a sudden you realize like wow this is what it means to not have it so easily and you know in such an accessible way so in some ways it was a huge boost to people's understanding of our mission work um, and that's been really incredible over the last couple of years um, it's also been fun as things have started to open up just to see malala back out there in the world um you know she's been on a lot of zoom screens doing a lot of different kind of virtual events but i was able to travel with her to doha qatar um, earlier this year and just to see the world's response to you know kind of what a moral authority she is around girls education and the rights of of young women and girls more broadly that was really energizing and i can't wait to do more of that yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely something to be said coming into this role at this time in our lives. And it's just making me think like, you know, I've been speaking with various members of Malala Fund and, and just about the kind of communication that has been had all around the world and the ways that you all have been able to help girls connect with each other, yeah. which is just really incredible. So I know that obviously you're like a huge part of that and facilitating that. So it's really wonderful to hear the more that they can help connect with each other and then we can learn about them. It's It's wonderful. So at least during this time, we have the access of the internet, being able to offer yeah. out technology and supplies uh, to to make that happen, which is yeah. awesome. Yeah, and I think we've, I mean, I think we've learned too that like the hardware is only part of the equation, right? You can have like, you know, Google calendars and Zoom links shared all over the world, but if you don't have like a culture of belonging and getting each other's back and really understanding workload and burnout, I feel like that's a way that Malala Fund's really tried to grow over the last couple of years is sort of not just provide the tools for you to do your job, but also to provide an environment where you feel like you've got like the rest and the reach charge needed to do the good work. So for me as a leader, that's been a lot of my learning this last stretch that we've known each other. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's a wonderful thing to go. I mean, it's it's a hard thing to go through in a way, but it's such a fantastic learning process. Like you, you benefit so much from that and then it just helps so many around you. Yeah. Um, now, speaking of helping people around you, <laughs> um, 
I'm curious about what kind of your current initiatives are with Malala Fund, the things that you're striving to do, the people that you're working with, things like that. Yeah, a couple of things that really jump out. I mean, because we've been talking about this sort of like remote world and coming out of the pandemic, some of the first times we talked, I mentioned some of the partners we had through our COVID initiative. And I just want to say that we're still working with all of them. You know, Kiki James with Ace Charity in Nigeria, who was providing radio learning for, you know, sort of millions of Nigerian school kids still at it, um, still yes. a partner her Malala Fund, still helping invest in her vision and her activism to make sure that education is accessible. Some newer stuff, um, we've launched a girl fellowship program and we're working with really incredible fellows sort of around the world. A young woman named Aisha in Pakistan, um, part of an all-female and all-female-led household after her father passed away a few years ago. Her mother made clear that education was an absolute priority. She's finishing up medical school right now and has joined Malala Fund as our first ever cohort of fellows and really wow. teaching her, you know, activism skills, leadership skills, you know, what does it mean to chart a path for your future with good education. Um, the last example that I might raise up, and this one will be obvious, is the work that we've been doing in Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. So we're almost one year, um, a one year anniversary and a sad one to celebrate where secondary age school girls have been left out of school. It's the only place in the world where girls are not going to school because they're girls. Um, right. And we continue to really keep that issue on the radar screen of leaders. We can't forget about it. The struggle's not over. The challenge for those girls is not finished. The Taliban has made, unfortunately, a lot of empty promises of getting those girls back into school. So Afghanistan really remains very close to the hearts of our co-founders and to the whole organization. So those are a few things that we're working on in really, you know, diverse and exciting places all around the world. Yeah, absolutely. And and with helping, you know, get these girls back into school, into high schools um, or things like that, or just, I don't know, what, what steps are you able to take um, to provide aid for them at the moment? Just curious. Yeah, I mean, we do a couple of different things. You know, we always have, I mean, first and foremost, no matter where we're kind of headquartered or have our offices around the world, we're most interested in local education activists who are on the front lines of local struggle. So that means investing in their programs. That means investing in school systems. That means helping them make policy changes around the safety of girls, um, STEM education for girls, like anything in that policy and funding space that local education activists know is the right piece. Um, we're also always lifting up the voice of girls. So what we found, and I think this is someone that you'll speak with maybe later this week, one of my colleagues, Chisholm, she was sort of hearing from so many readers through the assembly, our digital newsletter, that they're concerned about climate. So everybody says, well, you're a girls' education you know, organization. What do you do working on climate? Well, the truth is, is that so many girls with whom we work around the world see climate as a massive threat to their sort of continued life, not just their education. It's either that flooded roads keep them from even getting to school or it means that the curriculum at school isn't really teaching them about climate in a 21st century and sort of STEM focused way. Right. So Chisholm put together an amazing climate toolkit and we're putting that into the hands of girl leaders who are amplifying the messages in ways that feel really important and really powerful. Yeah, absolutely. And I know that that and other wonderful stories that you all can read are on Malala.org. You can also go to assembly dot malala dot org uh, to read about some of the things that Suzanne has mentioned already. And within these stories, or even just your time as CEO over the last two years, since we've yeah. spoken before, I want to know over all of your time here so far, mm. are there any particular moments, experiences, things within the fund or from the girls around the world that you've had like a, an emotional connection with, like a very impactful moment that you're like, this will sit with me always that you'd like to share? Oh gosh. You know, there's so I, know. I mean, there really is like so many. I mean, I'm I, sure. I think people would I think you wouldn't even believe how much my LinkedIn inbox or my email is just sort of flooded day after day with stories <laughs> yeah. of like girls anywhere in the world who say, I read her book or I saw a video interview with her, or I met her father and think about feminist fatherhood and it's changed the course of my life, essentially. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, one person that I really have so admired getting to know, funded through Malala Fund our Education Champion Network is a woman by the name of Lala Rook um, in Pakistan, a group called Science Fuse that really is just, I mean, it's STEM education, which we all sort of know about the science, technology, engineering, and math, but she's really getting STEM education into some of the parts of Pakistan that are the hardest to reach where, you know, we're not even, you know, girls aren't even always permitted to go to school, much less pursue careers mm -hmm. that are really so technical and science-based. And yet we all know that's sort of the future, right, of the world 
world, much less of girls in places like this. Um, so I'm so motivated by someone like Lala at Science Fuse that's just like barrier after barrier, kind of like knocking them down and knows that she's on like just such a righteous path to put the power of education into the hands of girls. Um, that's a really inspiring example. And she's been a longtime partner. We call them education champions. And we've got many of them all over the world, almost 100 now, but many wow. working kind of in collaboration in different countries. So a group of education champions in Pakistan or in Ethiopia or Brazil that are really looking around them and saying, what are the biggest challenges to our community today that we can collaborate on and work on together? Um, and I get enormous inspiration from that. Just the idea that people are willing to put aside like my organization and my status and instead say, what can I bring to this table so that we can do more for the girls and young women in our community? Um, that part's really most inspiring, that sort of spirit of collaboration and generosity. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, when, when you can see groups coming together, it just makes such a big difference. Like working as a greater whole for yeah. like the good of girls, the good of education, like providing all of these tools to people, pushing down these barriers, like you're saying. That's a really wonderful thing for me to hear as well, personally, yeah. because there's so many barriers that we fight against, just as people in general, in yeah. all kinds of different groups um, around the world, but especially with girls in many different situations. So really, really wonderful to hear. Yeah, And with collaboration, I also want to know your thoughts on working with uh, us over the last couple of years, because this is uh, our fifth or sixth. I know we've done five events together. So yeah, we've done a lot leading, leading into this event. Like, you know, what's it been like for you for like, I know with our communication, I mean, me personally, it's been wonderful connecting with all of you, getting to speak with all of you. But how has it been on your end, you know, with us? Like what what's the experience been like? The experience has been, um, first of all, fun. I mean, this is definitely <laughs> one of the most fun partnerships that we have. And I remember just after I started and before COVID started, you know, Nico, my colleague was like, we're doing this speed running gaming event. And <laughs> I didn't really have an idea of kind of how to get my brain around it and did my research. And, you know, foo, I follow you on Instagram and know all the different ways <laughs> that you're sort of working. Like, it's really, for me, it's like so fascinating to come into these other cultures and communities of people who are bonded around something that they love, but also also outwardly focused on charity, on generosity, on making change in the world. And that is who you all have been for us. Like year after year have come back and said in places like Afghanistan, in places like Ukraine, girls do not have access to really basic human rights like an education. And you just have never let up. You've been creative about the storytelling. I mean, one thing, Fu, coming into today's conversation, I knew you would ask, you're always so interested in the story. Like I am. Who is the girl, who is the young woman? Where is she? And how can I bring like better understanding to what her challenge is day to day? I feel like that curiosity just really characterizes what our partnership with with you have been has been about. Yeah, I agree. I agree with that. Honestly, it's just you just see so many parallels between us, like as an organization, like the whole Frame Fatal community and Malala Fund together, just working for for more like just eyes eyes on the, the yeah. issues like the things so it's, it's just it just has been such a good partnership so i just really appreciate i do I too. We all, we're so yes. grateful for it we're so grateful for it grateful for the attention and the care and just like wanting to do something different kind of year after year you always talk with such amazing members of the team too so you're hearing from me at the kickoff but like throughout the week you're going to hear from colleagues at like every different sort of like piece of malala fun you know the communication story or the fundraising story or the program story yes. um that part i also love that you really have taken an interest in like the whole of the organization globally. Um, we're about 85 people around the world with offices in many countries. So you've really embraced the whole of it. And I appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely. It's such, again, it, it's such a pleasure. And I really can't state that enough being able to speak with people all over the world, doing all kinds of different things. And so those of you watching at home, I would really encourage you to check out everybody else's stories to mm -hmm. kick off the days each week. Um, they're really wonderful and have so much insight and so much experience. It's really awesome. Now, before I let you go, is there anything else you'd like to share with everybody? Like just any kind of last words of things that you would like people to know before we head on into the speed runs? Well, I mean, have fun over the next couple of days. <laughs> Enjoy yourselves and like remember that this is a difficult time. Sometimes we look around the world and we think, gosh, everything from climate change to crisis and conflict and COVID, like remember that the only thing that's going to get us through is this sort of question of collaboration and of curiosity about the other person, how we make the world a better place together. Um, I don't know, I guess just to sort of say, let that, let that hope kind of pull you through. Um, and in the meantime, though, have fun in this beautiful 
beautiful community that you all have built together and and know that it's made an enormous difference in a group like Malala Fund. Um, the resources that you all have helped us raise have gone like straight into the hands of people who are on the front lines doing the hardest work in some of the most difficult parts of the world. And that's truth. I mean, that's not a talking point. That's just like, that's what the partnership has done for us. Um, so I'm appreciative of that. And I just wish you guys the best next couple of days. Well, awesome. Thank you so much for speaking with me once again, Suzanne. It's always, always a pleasure. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I agree. Well, I'm so excited to kick off the marathon as well and get into our first speed run of the day. We have unpacking. Super excited. Uh, Kudaru is going to do an amazing job and uh, we will be starting the run shortly. Thank you all so much. Welcome back, everybody. I hope you enjoyed that phenomenal interview with Malala Fund. It's so great to see exactly where your donations are heading and to what an incredible cause they are benefiting. Speaking of donations, we're going to go through a couple more that we've received before we head into our next run, which will be unpacking with Cutie Roo. So make sure you stick around for that. It's going to be such a good time. All right, we have $50 from Tuvi Halfling Sorcerer, who says, Donating for the Stardew Valley meme run to support my favorite DM, the Valiant Sun. We appreciate that, Tuvi. Speaking of the meme category showcase, we are already at $2,365 out of the $3,000 that we need. So we are already over two-thirds of the way to meeting our first incentive. So let's see those donations come rolling in, and we are sure to hit that game. We also have $50 from Lyashir, who says... No better way to relax when I'm homesick than to watch great speedrunners playing great games. Looking forward to the unpacking and a short hike runs. Hope you feel better soon. Speaking of our meme showcase, we also have $25 from Captain Stitches who says, I want to see the Valiant Sun play more Stardew Valley. You know what? Same. <laughs> we are getting so close to hitting it. Great job, everybody. We have $25 from Holly, who says, So excited for the coming week. Good luck to all the wonderful runners. This is also your friendly reminder that if you would like to see what other runs we have coming up throughout the week, make sure to check out gamesdonequick.com slash schedule and you can see all of the amazing runners that are going to be showcased this week. We have $25 from Zello who says, The Flame Fatales marathons are always blazing quick. Remember to hydrate and stay cool. Be even cooler by making a donation if you can. And thanks to all staff and runners for being the coolest. Thanks to you too, Zello, for also being super cool. <laughs> we have $25 from Dimajiko, who says, Been watching AGDQ and SGDQ for years. First Flame Fatales I've ever seen. Can't wait to watch the speedruns and what an awesome charity to donate to. Keep on keeping on. Well, welcome to your first Flame Fatales. It's so good to have you. We have $25 from Psycat who says, My BF and I always watch GDQ. And yesterday we moved into our first house together. Excited to spend our first day watching these runs and unpacking. Best of luck with all of your unpacking, Psycat. It's very relevant to the next run that we have coming up. We have $10 from Vilen who says, Hey, Fatals, so excited to catch the marathon live. 
Excited to kick off the week with so many cozy games. Let's go Malala, girl power. Checking in on our incentives, we have already raised $2,565 out of the $3,000 we need to unlock the meme category extension showcase. So that'll feature the Valiant Sun running. And there are going to be some really snazzy memes that we're going to be featuring. So make sure to stick around for that. Also, just looking forward incentive-wise, we also have an incentive open for Katana Zero. And the incentive is called Race with the Prism Sword. So in order to unlock that, we need to hit $1,000 raised for that. We're currently at 75 and well on our way to hitting that one in time. Thank you so much to everybody who has already donated for Malala Fund. Keep them coming in. We have $100 from players A plus B who says, Hot drinks! Good luck to all the runners. Now, listen, I'm really curious, chat and all the donators. Do you prefer hot drinks or cold drinks? This is a highly contested question in the Fatals community. So I am very curious to see what you think. Make sure to send in your donations supporting either hot drinks or cold drinks, and we'll read them out and see if there's one that people tend to like more. I'll let you know what I'm into. I am a hot drinks person the whole way through. <laughs> so I'm a little biased. <laughs> we have $25 from Bookworm who says, Stardew Valley meme run, take my money. Here's to a great event and a great cause. And I just really want to shout this out, everybody. We haven't even started our first game of the marathon, and we have already unlocked the Stardew Valley Bonus Run Meme Category Extension Showcase. What? Congratulations, everybody. You are all doing amazing. Our first incentive has already been unlocked and we have hit it. Incredible work, everybody. We have $100 from Reverend Gumby who says, Thank you to staff and volunteers for supporting this important cause. We have $25 from Nightflyer. Thank you so much, Nightflyer, for your donation. We appreciate it so much. We also have $50 from Anonymous. Thank you so much for your donation. We have $50 from Eric LZ who says, excited to watch this with my daughter who is under one year old. Oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> well, you may have a future fatale in the making, so we're excited to see you and your daughter around these events in the future as well. We have $25 from Kay who says, let's get this show going. Less than three heart. Thank you so much, Kay, for your donation. We appreciate it. We also have $2 from Pumpkaboo, who says, Pumpkaboo, Pumpkaboo. <laughs> so good to see so many Pumpkaboo lovers, both in chat and in the donations. Thanks so much, everybody. We 
have $25 from the Valiant Sun who says, Stardew, hi! So excited for Stardew. After unpacking, we will have a Stardew run followed by that meme showcase that we've all unlocked. So absolutely having so much Stardew hype. All right, uh, we have twenty dollars from Waliza. This is this is a long one. Okay, hold tight, everybody. Uh, I will not be singing it, but I will absolutely um, talk rap through it. <laughs> uh, all right, here we go. Drinks cold. Are you ready? Here we go. Soft drinks, lemonade, water, cold tea. It's up to you. It's up to me. Cold drinks come in four cups. You gotta know the size before you fill it up. Biggie, medium, small, kids meal. Keep it straight. It's a good deal. Use the scoop to fill with ice. Never use the cup, take my advice. Four soft drinks, fill the ice halfway. No matter the size, that's what I say. Tilt the cup and push against the lever. Keeps the foam down, now isn't that clever. If there's still foam, let it settle down. Don't pour it off or your boss will frown. When you reach a quarter inch from the top, that's where you wanna stop. The customers say they wanna stay. Put the drink on the left-hand side of the tray. If the order's to go, put the lid on tight. Make sure it pops to do it right. Hand the drink to the coordinator and tell the guest you'll see him later. Oh, don't forget to smile when you serve cold drinks. Ha! Always say thank you to the guest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're the one that can make the difference. For lemonade, things stay the same. Half full with ice, I said it again. Fill the juice to a quarter inch from the top, just like you did the pop. Water is a courtesy to our guests. Use a small cup, you know the rest. Now it's time to serve cold tea, but the ice is different. Listen carefully. Instead of half full, fill it all the way up to the top of the cup. Add the tea, and if they ask for a lemon, put it here. Now that's a given. Cold drinks, that's all there is to it. Go ahead and try. I know you can do it. <laughs> Woo! That was a long one. <laughs> Thanks so much for the $20. I see we have loads of cold drink love in the donations today. Also, just shouting out that if you are having a lot of Stardew hype today, make sure to check out our prizes that we have that are open today. So speaking of some Stardew Valley stuff, you may want to check out the Stardew Valley Pals pins. So in order to get those, you need to do a minimum donation of $10. And those will close when the Final Fantasy IV free enterprise randomizer ends. So make sure to check out all of the prizes that we have available. We also have Stardew Valley for Nintendo Switch. Minimum donation of $5, and that will also close when the Final Fantasy IV Free Enterprise Randomizer ends. All of these, I won't repeat when they end, they all end at the same time, so let's just keep going through some prizes. <laughs> we have some Stardew Valley Magnets for a minimum donation of $10, and they are so adorable! We also have Stardew Valley Earrings and Keychain, minimum donation of $10. Now, this one feels really pertinent to Flame Fatales, but we have a The Valley Candle. So we have a candle for a minimum donation of $5. Also, we have a Sleepy Chicken Magnet Set with a minimum donation of $10. And I don't know about you, but I find these Sleepy Chickens so adorable. So make sure to check out the prizes page on the Games Done Quick website and see if there's any that suit your fancy. Not only can you support an incredible cause, you can also maybe have your chance at winning one of our amazing prizes provided by members of the community.
All right, well, it sounds like we are ready for our first run of the event. We have Unpacking by Cutie Roo. We're gonna send it over there, take it away.